Greetings, everybody. So, uh, this is a new thing I'm doing called Nordy Reads because I can't think of good titles, but it's sort of a branch off of Nordy Rex because in here I read fan fiction, creepy pastas, anything I want for the first time. And watching the Walker Brothers vlogs on Gravity Falls reminded me of this uh, little fan fiction called. Dipper goes to Taco Bell. I, I don't know really what it's about. I'm assuming Dipper goes to Taco Bell. The Pines goes to Taco Bell, so... I don't know, I've read your Squidward Suicide and Cupcakes, so... I don't know. Maybe this won't bother me at all, but... Let's just see what it's about. I got the, tried to get some creepy lighting in a different sort of area. And this is so. If you hear something scratching on the door, it's probably the dog. But I will try to ignore it. So here is the tale of the time Dipper went to Taco Bell. By someone I do not know. Dipper goes to Taco Bell. It was a normal day in Gravity Falls, Oregon. Well, as normal as Gravity Falls gets, anyways. Dipper Pines was reading his book, and Mabel, his twin sister, was wondering what he was doing. Dipper, are you going to keep your nose buried in that strange book of yours all summer? You gotta go out, have an adventure, Mabel exclaimed. Exclaimed, I'm, I apologize. Not now, Dipper said quietly. I'm trying to decode this. He was looking at a cryptogram that said, Dipper was officially stumped. He could not figure out what it meant, and it seemed very mysterious to him. Grunkle Stan is going to take us to the dinner for lunch, Dipper, Mabel exclaimed. Dipper, however, was not in the mood for the diner. He was publicly humiliated the last time he went, and he thought the food wasn't very good anyway. Mabel, I don't want to go to the diner, Dipper said solemnly. I want to go somewhere else, but there is really nothing else to do in town, unless you count the Taco Bell near the forest, Mabel replied. Taco Bell, Dipper's ears perked up. He had never eaten at Taco Bell before, and ever since last week he had been craving for Mexican food for some reason. Why don't we go to Taco Bell today, Dipper said. Dipper asked. Taco Bell, Grunkle Stan questioned. Why do you want to go there? It smells like the bathroom when it's clogged. I had my heart set on pancakes, Mabel moaned. Listen, you can go to Taco Bell if you want, but don't come crying to me when you smell like expired onions. Fine, I will, Dipper said harshly. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, Grunkle Stan said. But as he was exiting the mystery shack, the door hit him on the way out. <laughs> ah ha 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 ha, said Grunkle Stan. He was laughing. So anyways... Mabel and Grunkle Stan went to the diner while Dipper tried to find the Taco Bell. He had brought with him his book and a couple bucks. But finding the Taco Bell was harder than he had previously thought. He had been looking around town for what seemed like days. The mystery book wasn't helping him either, until he saw a flicker of a sign in the forest. He went into the forest. Why would there be a Taco Bell in the forest? Dipper asked himself. After hiking for about an hour, Dipper finally got to the Taco Bell. But it sure didn't look like any Taco Bell he'd ever seen. It was surrounded by a barrage of giant oak trees in an open field, completely different from the rugged terrain of the Oregon forest. The open field was covered with at least three layers of pine needles, which got the attention of Dipper. He stuck his hand into the pine needles. Ow! Dipper shouted. A pine needle poked him. It hurts. The restaurant, Taco Bell, looked like a silo, sort of. Well, it was very cylindrical. The outside had rusty picnic tables and looked like no one used them at all. Dipper walked up to the restaurant's door. Should I go in there? Dipper asked himself. I'm starting to have second thoughts. Why is there a small, desolate Taco Bell in this forest, miles from the nearest road? But I guess it's my only option. Mabel and Grunkle Stan are probably done with lunch right now. And they were. Mabel wondered why Dipper hadn't come back yet, but Grunkle Stan didn't give a damn. So Dipper entered the restaurant. 
but he was relieved to see that the interior was normal, except for its high ceiling. There was also no customers inside, but Dipper thought that was normal, considering how the franchise was so isolated. He went up to the counter. There was only one cashier working the registers, a very old, slightly deaf, bored out of his skull cashier. Dipper decided that he wanted to order, then approached the register. Excuse me, I'll have... We only got tacos, the cashier interrupted. Okay, I guess I'll have a taco, then, Diaper said. What did you say? the cashier yelled. I said I want a taco, Dipper yelled back. Okay then, the cashier said, then went in the back for a few minutes. When he came out, he was carrying Dipper's taco. That'll one dollar, the cashier said. Dipper gave him the money and went to sit down at the least grimiest table. He bit into the hot, spicy, juicy taco, filled with thick, pure meat, mild, tantalizing black beans, and sour, fluffy, sour cream. He enjoyed the single bite of, what, of that perfectly cooked taco and still tasted it in his mouth after he swallowed it. But as he was about to bite into it a second time, he felt a churning movement inside his body, something that he had felt often. Uh-oh, Dipper said, then rushed to find the lavatory. Man, that really went through me, Dipper said to himself. For some reason, the bathrooms were hidden in a corner, far from the counter, and far from the table he was sitting at. When he walked in, he found that the bathrooms were surprisingly clean, for a fast food restaurant, anyway, and Dipper found this suspicious. All of the stalls were full, and no one was using the urinals. But right on cue, someone walked out of one of the stalls. Dipper didn't pay much attention to who was walking out, but he was wearing all black and had a plastic bag with him. Dipper just had to go. Unfortunately, he didn't make it in in time. He checked his pants and found the worst of all. Diarrhea, Dipper said. Yee. <laughs> he was about to leave the stall then he, when he noticed a bulge in his pants. He touched the bulge, and once he touched it, he knew exactly what it was. It was an erection. Oh no. He found himself completely aroused after touching oh my god. After touching it and started to do it for some more. Eventually he was ready to hardcore masturbate. He didn't know what was arousing him, but he knew he was aroused. Fuck me. He took off his blue shorts and his soiled underwear, revealing his medium sized but not small penis. The tip was bright and red like Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. Dipper started to yank his Johnson harder and faster. The five-incher was getting pumped. Dipper's soiled hands started to feel bits of pre-cum on his dry fingers. Eventually, the medium-sized dick couldn't take it anymore and burst in an explosion of cum. The cum got all over the walls and toilet, and Dipper felt proud. He had creamed himself for the first time. First time, but he was upset that it was not over windy. No, Dipper thought. All this is not enough for me. I need to release all of this. With his erection still active, Dipper began yanking his penis again. It was much quicker, and Dipper cummed quicker. It was a bigger release than last time, and it began to rain Dipper's seed. Dipper felt more proud than last time, his heart about to burst from all the droplets of cum falling down from the ceiling. He felt as happy as he had felt on the day of the first snowfall of the year. He stuck out his tongue to Tast the cum, shiny from the faulty fluorescent lighting in the bathroom. He tasted it, and he thought it was the one of the best tistif things in the world. Better than the largest chocolate bar, better than the rarest pig, and better than the taco he was having earlier. By now he couldn't stop. He couldn't leave now and miss out on this great masturbation adventure. He wanted to taste the cum. He scraped a handful of it off the stall and put it in his dirty, wet mouth. He grabbed another and another and another. He was getting more aroused by consuming the cum, and he released another load. So that's where it's all coming from, Dipper said to himself. Cum all over his face and teeth. Dipper came up with a solution to get a more hardcore, adu hardcore adult masturbation experience. He was going to put it into action. He tilted his head down, sat down on the cum-covered ground, grabbed his hardened Johnson, and stuck it in his mouth. I, d uh, I didn't think uh, even in a cartoon you could do that. 
Once it was firmly in, Dipper began to suck on the very hard rod. He sucked it like the lollipop he got at a, the county fair a while back. It tastes a lot like it, too. The legs were ex were so expertly over his shoulder that he could have been a gymnast. The more he sucked on his hard dick, the more his aroused legs shook. You know, I, I think this is how uh, the Randall's cousin died in uh, Clerks. Eventually, just when he was going to give out, he came in his mouth. It was the best thing he ever experienced. He kept on performing Felitio on himself. As he was stimulating himself orally, he accidentally fell over to his side. He broke from his penis and cummed on the floor. The floor was covered in so much of Dipper's cum that he started to make a snow angel in the cum. Or a cum angel. He was eating some in the process. But then he looked to his side and immediately became so hard that the red tip was touching his short pubic hair. He, would, he saw what was causing it. He saw his underwear covered in dark brown feces. He held up his underwear, which was covered in the cum-filled floor, and marveled at his erotic beauty. The feces were so beautifully ejaculated, so smooth in its stickly brownness, so perfectly, they felt in Dipper's white hands. He wanted his shit. He held the brown underwear like a fish on a lure, and put his sticky white lips into the sticky brown feces. His tongue was rubbing the crap all over his tight, tidy whites, making his mouth all a brownish-white mess. He was biting into the shit and sucked it in his mouth. It was more stimulating than ever before. He now knew that he didn't need Wendy or Mabel or any of the other girls in Gravity Falls. All he needed was a big pile of shit, like this fan fiction. He talked a scoop of the feces, he had a lot of diarrhea, and began to spread it over his dick. Every time he spread the crap, he was getting more and more aroused. Once his dick was completely brown, he came again. It filled up all the spots in the stall and wor that weren't covered in Dipper's cum. Once again, Dipper took big scoops of cum and consumed it in large gulps. Now Dipper had to put the brown sticky feces all over his penis again, and boy did he do a good job. The brown stuff was all over his external genitals and his testicles. Th those are external. He, was, he had cummed a few times here and there. Now, his beautiful brown genitals needed to be cleaned, but Dipper didn't have any cleaning, cleaning supplies, so he had to suck the shit off. He brung his erection up to his mouth and began to suck. This time, he made it very clear to lick the feces off with his tongue. And as soon as the tongue touched his dick, he calmed. He was having the most fun he had ever had in that bathroom stall, and forgot who he was, where he lived, where he was, or what he was eating. All that was on his mind was his sweet cum. He just thought of a great idea. Dipper took a scoop full of diarrhea and scoop full of cum and put it in the toilet. He flushed it, but before it all went all the way down, he grabbed the wet pile of shit and cum and stuck it in his mouth. Dipper was consuming all the shit, cum, and toilet water, and it tasted great. <sighs> he kept on doing it for God knows how long, and one of the times he hit his head against the toilet rim. Dipper's brain must have been knocked out of place at that time, because this time, instead of putting the shit and cum in his food hole, he started to lather it on his penis again. He wanted more of his Johnson, but that would be a fatal mistake. Once it was covered again, he put it in his mouth and began sucking, but it did, but did it too hard. He was sucking and coming, and he accidentally bit on his dick! As soon as he tasted the blood, he broke out of coitus and saw his lacrative penis. He saw a mix of blood and cum coming out of it, like uh, lava, and his erectile muscle pointing out. Dipper grabbed it and grimaced in pain. He winced at it and looked horrified. He snapped out of it all and tried to figure out a solution to the castration. He put some more diarrhea and cum on it, and that didn't stop the bleeding. Dipper spit out the pieces of dick that he bit off, and he tried to reapply it, but it didn't work. No matter how many times he tried to retach it, they all failed. He put more of his reproductive fluids on the castration, but they only made the penis swell up like the Goodyear blimp. Dipper was licking the blood off the try, the try to stop it, but the blood was coming faster than he could lick. He was now in ultimate pain and felt nothing like this. He screamed as loud as he could and felt like no one could hear him. He was screaming louder and louder, saying, Help! I bit my dick off! 
He was going insane. He started to bang against the stall, screaming, Help! as loud as he could. After a full five minutes, with a large mix of blood, cum, and feces on the floor, he was banging his head against the stall. The banging was louder than the loudest thunderstorm, and yet no one came for help. Dipper was alone in the bathroom, alone in the stall, alone with his beloved Dick, now to near death, and unfortunately he was near death. After one final blow to the head, and now screaming, Dipper was now as silent as Christmas Eve. He felk to the floor, eyes turned skyward, and fell in a mix of his own blood, cum, and feces. At the mystery shack, Mabel was feeling very worried about Dipper, so she went off and tried to find him. She went off into the forest first. She knew where it was. And surprisingly, got there in less time than Dipper. As she entered the newly cleaned door, she immediately noticed the once bitten taco on one of the tables and immediately knew it was Dipper's. Mabel rushed into the men's bathroom, she liked to use the urinals, and rushed into a random stall's. It was her brother's. Mabel looked at how messy the stall was and how it was used to do the deed. Her pink sneakers were sticky from stepping into the reddish brown mess of fluids. She walked around the messy stall for a bit, but then saw the most horrid sight she could imagine, Dipper's corpse. Mabel was welled up in tears at the sight of it and began to cry. As she was crying, she sat down in a pyre of blood, feces, and cum and looked at Dipper's lifeless face. It was beautiful. As his stomach facial features, as his smooth facial features complemented his circle of cum around his lips. Oh, Dipper, Mabel said through her tears, let me clean the white stuff off your lips. Mabel brought Dipper's head up to hers and she kissed him. After pulling out of the kiss, Mabel enjoyed it and so she kissed him again. And she didn't want to let go of Dipper, not now. Now, when he had just died, he was a brother, after all. She held Dipper's naked corpse in her arms, and she felt a tingling feeling in herself, and secret dirty side. No one would care. No one would care if we just did it right. He is dead, and no, uh, no one would know if this restroom stall. Mabel thought. She immediately came up with an answer. She pulled Dipper's head to her head and kissed him again, only it was a French kiss. Once Mabel was done, she put the body on the floor. Then Mabel got down on the fluid-covered floor, too. Mabel started to go on a kiss-crazy frenzy with Dipper that made it lock like Dipper was alive. Tongue went to Dipper's deceased mouth, scraping the feces and cum off the, floor, off the roof of Dipper's mouth. Mabel was shaking even more now that her tongue was touching Dipper's. She un unzipped her jeans, slowly slid, slid them off, and then threw them at the wall. They stuck there from the cum. Mabel revered her nice, clean, exposed virgin vagina. He took, she took Dipper's corpse, not noticing the internally bleeding penis, and brought it closer to the surface. She rubbed her clitoris for arousal purposes before she stuck it in, and once the dick was firmly in, she finally felt joy in her life. She loved the feeling of losing it to her dead brother's body and starting to get the oddest feeling. She lost it. She finally lost it! She squealed in happiness and started to French kiss Dipper harder. Her tongue almost touched Dipper's uvula. She kept holding on to his lacrated dick in her vagina and sloshing her tongue all around Dipper's mouth. She kept pulling in and out with Dipper's stick. Blood was getting on her urethra walls, not noticing one bit. <sighs> she did not want to leave the body. Not now. She would kill herself if it would. It could mean they'd be in coitus forever. If only Dipper could kiss her back. After what seemed like hours, it wouldn't fit in. Mabel finally looked down at the now pretty messed up penis. Mabel couldn't look away at it. It was now swollen to the size of her head, a whole mix of rainbow colors and still spewing lifeless cum. Mabel vomited on it, which only made it worse. It grew bigger and bigger. Oh, Dipper, she said softly. Then Mabel started to scream. She was horrified at the sight of it and started to barf again. She tried to put a giant mix of blood, cum, vomit, and feces on the dick, but it didn't work. She tried to suck it all off, but found herself enjoying the sucking and taste of Dipper's penis blood. 
She kept on sucking on it, tasting the blood and touchy and fondling Dipper's dead erectile muscle. She was ecstatic. She was more happy than she ever had been, more happy than she was before, and she was squealing with delight, and stall the stall door started to open a crack. Mabel took notice of this. Huh? she asked. The door started to open more. It wasn't locked. Mabel started to get nervous. She didn't want to go to jail for necrophilia. She was only a child. Who bit off more than she could chew? She got too ahead of herself after lusting after her twin brother for so long. If it wasn't the police, she had no hope. She hoped if it was just another Taco Bell employee who would listen to her and help her out. The stall door finally burst open. Standing in front of it was a man dressed in black. He had a Taco Bell logo sewn on the left of his fleece jacket. He was wearing squeaky shoes that squeaked across the bathroom floor. He was wearing dark sunglasses. <laughs> The mysterious man walked up to the two of them slowly. Mabel stood up on her feet, fear and blood on her face. The man stared at Mabel for a long time until he finally said, Are you supposed to be in this bathroom, young lady? Mabel was shaking in horror now. She turned to face Dipper's naked, violated, dead body and turned to face the man again. Mister, I, I in, in, didn't in, intend to, to do th th this to m m my br brother, Mabel said, shaking him with tears in her eyes. The man brought himself closer to Mabel's face. S sir, you're, you're in my, my, my p p personal space, Mabel tried to manage. The man was inspecting a red spot on Mabel's cheek. After several seconds, the man touched the spot, trailed his finger in it, and put the finger in his mouth. Blood, the man whispered to himself. What did you just say, sir? Mabel asked him, not understanding what he was saying. Little girl, do you know what that is on your cheeks? The man asked. Mabel repeated that the mysterious man did to her cheek and said back to him, It's b -b blood. And with the blood being on her, your cheek, you have you developed, shall we say, a desired taste for it? The man asked back. Mabel did not notice the retractable chisel in his right hand. Um, um, yes, I didn't mean to, I just, shh, sh the man quieter. If you like the addicting taste of it, why didn't you say so? <laughs> and without warning, the man cut her across the chest with a chisel. She screamed at the pain of it, blood starting to pour out of the di diagonal cut fast, almost covering her stomach. You can lick that up. Your blood probably tastes better than that, kids, the man said, pointing to Dipper. Then the man gave another crop across her face. She screamed again, louder this time. Now you can get the blood across close to your face. And just to make sure you're silent, the man then slid her across the neck. She could not scream this time. The man went into her neck and pulled out three vocal cords. The man stretched the cords out and jumped rope with them, while slashing Mabel across the face several times. When her face was cut so many times that her nose fell off, fell off, the man decided it was time for the scalping. He took out a bigger knife and slammed it right above Mabel's eyebrows. The man gripped the knife's handle still in her face and began to make a deep cut. The man put all his strength into it because he decided to make the hardest part first. He tried to do it right on the skin, but sadly did not do the job he liked. Mabel's head was now topless, the top of her skull exposed and violently cut, so that you could see her brains inside the skull. Tidgy pieces of muscle and flesh were still attached to Mabel's hairy scalp, so the man cut them off. The scalp was now thin as skin and still full of Mabel's hair. He hung the scalp's scalp up on the floor of the door. It would be his prize, something he kept for himself. Now the man prepared for the rest of the body. What he wanted to do next was to make it rain. Not water, as you may think. He wanted it to rain something else. He got down to Mabel's blood-covered slash chest, grabbed her not fully developed breast, and began to cut off Mabel's nipples. Once he was done, the blood started to come out like old faithful geyser. He was amazed by the sight of the fountain of blood, and began to dance around in the stall, stepping in all the fluids that were on the floor. When the blood was starting to flow a little less slowly, the man moved on to the legs. The man hung Mabel's nipples next to the scalp. The nips were his prize, too. And started to cut Mabel's legs. He started to cut faster than a race car driver on a smooth asphalt track. Tech cuts kept on appearing on her kneecaps until the cap 
bone was exposed. By that time, her lower legs and her body were only attached by a thring's thin string of cartilage. Then the guy moved onto her toes with the knife as sharp as knife. He cut every one of her little toes off. Mabel's body was losing so much blood that she started to flatten out. The place where it was mostly coming out of was her toes. The toe blood was making a sea of red on the floor. The man, now with his Taco Bell fleece jacket splattered with red on it, now dug the knife into Mabel's left foot. He began to make another cut, similar to what he did to her scalp, and began to cut his skin off of the foot. The cut was much better than what he did to the scalp. He did the same to the other foot, and then hugged the skin up to the scalp. Mabel's feet Mabel's feet were now just a big mess of flesh, muscle, blood, and nerves. Mabel, who was still alive, face was now completely exposed to all the cuts she was getting, her he mouth hanging open like a gaping person. The blood was already covering her chest, and since the man actually had a soul, he didn't want to subject the little girl to the misery she was about to endure. So he took the long knife and stabbed her in the middle of the chest, where her heart was. Blood poured out of it more than her cut-off nipples did. <sighs> Once most of the blood was done spewing, the man got down near Nabel's bloody vagina. He was carefully took his knife, got down near the cervix, and stuck the knife blade up the hole. While well, in Mabel's cock cave, the man was rotating the knife, cutting up the walls of Mabel's egg chamber. The tip of it got finely inside, and very carefully... Snipped every one of Mabel's fallopians. It was a hard job. He had to be very careful. He had done it many times before, but today wasn't his best day. He accidentally slit some of the sides of Mabel's vagina, cutting into the muscle surrounding it. The man was very embarrassed. Shit, hopefully no one will notice that, he said to himself. He took the knife out of Mabel's hole with ovaries and two fallopians on the blood-covered blade. The man got out. A pl big plastic trash bag and scraped the knife on it, making the contents contents on it go into the bag. But since the knife's handle was covered in more blood than it usually was, he accidentally let it slip and it dug into Maple's right shoulder. Perfect, the man said ominously. The man got, got out a pair of vinyl gloves and put them on his hands. He gripped the knife gently, wanting a deeper cut than he had before. After a while, after digging and digging and digging, the man's knife got through to the other side. Once the man saw the job he did, he threw the arm in his trash bag. He felt great pride and felt so that he could easily achieve his goal now. So he went to the other side of Mabel's nearly skinned body and began to cut that arm off. It was easier to do than the other one, surprisingly, and once he was done with that, he threw that arm into the garbage bag. Mabel's body was now almost flat due to all the blood loss. The man tasted some of it and thought that he could get a jar for last or later. <coughs> now for the legs. The man did the same with her legs, and they felt like they were getting easier to cut off each time. The legs were off, and the man threw it in the bag. Mabel's body was flat now. Almost all the blood from her body was gone. Embracing Mabel's dismembered body, he hugged it, licked the remaining blood off, and put the body in the bag. The man now had just noticed Dipper on the floor and figured he must have caused all this on the walls. Another one couldn't hurt. The man said to himself and started to cut off Dipper's appendages. He did it in the same order as this and same manner as Mabel's. It was done quickly and put all of it in the bag as well. Now it was time to clean up, as you can imagine. The bathroom stall was a big mess of fluids. The man got out a big chisel and started to chisel to come off the walls and into the bag. It took a long while, in about two or three hours. <coughs> Once it was done, he needed to clean the floor, so he went outside the stall and got a mop that he had with him the whole time. He mopped the whole mess of things up off the floor and into the bag until the floors and wall looked respectable, for a fast food bathroom anyway. The man got out some toilet cleaner and cleaned the toilet because it was way more messier than the stall itself. After a few minutes, the toilet cleaning was over and the stall was ex as clean as a new car. It smelled like it, too. The man left the bathroom and was the stall waited, ready for its next, vic next victim. The man got out of the bathroom and went into the back kitchen of the Taco Bell. He got near a machine. It was an odd-looking machine. It had a crank on the side, a funnel on the top, and some 
thing shaped like a taco on the side, near a conveyor belt. Why do I have to do everything myself? The man questioned. <coughs> he hung up his blood-stained jacket and sunglasses, revealing his Taco Bell employee uniform. It was spotless. The man took the bag and, one by one, started to put the body parts into the funnel. Once the bag was half empty, he kept on putting more parts in. Only this time, he turned the crank. Once the bag was empty, out popped out two tacos. They weren't really tacos, really. They were actually human body parts in the shape of tacos. They went down the conveyor belt, and the employee using spray cans began to spray paint and body spray paint the body parts. Once they got to the Taco Bell tissue paper at the end of the conveyor belt, they looked like genuine tacos. The man grabbed one of the tacos, wrapped it in tissue paper, and went to the front of the counter. He handed it to the old man cashier, then went back into the depths of the kitchen. Here's your taco, sir, the cashier said to the fat customer. You're welcome, Seuss said, handing the cashier the money. Alright. Uh, good twist ending, everything else was shit. <laughs> That's a ripoff of cupcakes. I'm not kidding, it's a fucking ripoff of cupcakes, just with more shit jokes. Fuck. Yeah. There you go, that was Dipper Goes to Taco Bell. Bye.